and welcome to a very special episode of the Scout Night Magazine vodcast from here in the grounds of the historic Royal Observatory Greenwich. We're here for the Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards Night 2011. Over the course of the next few minutes we're going to reveal the winners of the competition and also speak to some of the top astro images from around the world. The first category to be announced at this year's awards was Earth and Space for celestial images showing an earthly landscape. The runner-up was Ole C. Salamonson with a vibrant image of the northern light shimmering over an icy landscape. The Earth and Space winner was Tunk Tezel from Turkey, who captured an outstanding image of the Milky Way arching over a tropical rainforest in the Cook Islands. In the Our Solar System category, Paul Hasey was the runner-up with a beautiful trio of images showing the recent Saturnian storm. But it was UK planetary imager Damien Peach who won the category and indeed the overall Astronomy Photographer of the Year award with a truly outstanding image of Jupiter in two of its moons, Io and Ganymede. Well, we're here with Andrew Steele who had a highly commended image in the Earth and Space category and of course the overall winner, Damien Peach. Congratulations Thank to you. both of you. Thank you. Andrew, tell me about how you took your image. Well, I'd actually planned to take the photograph of the lunar eclipse on June the 15th this year, but unfortunately, as a lot of your uh, readers will probably know, it was cloudy over almost the whole UK. And so um, what I'd done was I'd planned this shot quite carefully. I got out a, uh, a map and a ruler and looked at where the Oxford skyline would be in front of the rising moon. And since it doesn't change that much from night to night, I thought I'd try go going back the next night. And um, so I cycled about eight miles out of Oxford, set up my tripod in the corner of a farmer's field and uh, watched the moon drift up over the horizon. It's a fantastic panoramic shot. Did you plan that out? Um, not really, no. I just I, I got there and saw, saw where it was to photograph. So had, had I photographed it on the night of the eclipse, it was going to be rising right behind the Radcliffe camera, which is probably Oxford's most famous landmark. It had actually moved slightly to the left, so I thought I'd try and get in the whole of the Oxford skyline, all the dreaming spires. Talking about technical imaging, your image was actually taken from Barbados, wasn't it? That's right. Um, I kind of cheated in a way in that I kind of escaped the, the kind of weather we have here in the UK and uh, jetted off to, to Barbados to, to kind of do you know, what I really enjoy, and that's photographing the, uh, the planet. What sort of telescope was the image taken with? It was actually taken with a 14-inch reflecting telescope, so it, it, quite a large telescope. Um, but one kind of ideally suited to photographing the planets in particular. Is there any one thing that you look for in an image when you're composing the shot? What's most important to you? It's a very interesting question. I think the I think the most important thing is actually the stability of the Earth's atmosphere, um, because that is really the kind of limiting factor in how sharp and clear your images will be. So when you get nights where it's very very still and the images are very sharp, those it's kind of those periods that you're hoping and waiting for. Yeah. Did the amount of detail on the moon surprise even yourself? Because I know when we were judging. Yeah. It, yeah. We just could not believe it. it was absolutely incredible the amount of detail on the two moons. I must admit that the detail on Ganymede surprised me. Um, it's probably the best image of Ganymede I've ever taken and when I actually compared it to the the, um, the Voyager map of Ganymede, the match is perfect uh, and this absolutely thrilled me and it, it, it's, it's just amazing that the amateur telescopes are able to, to capture things previously um, almost unreachable by, by amateur telescopes. It just shows how far technology and, uh, and ability has progressed in the last 10 or 20 years. What advice do you have to readers of Scar Night magazine who are interested in getting into planetary imaging? Um, I think one quality they will need above all is patience. <laughs> it, it takes a lot of patience because particularly here in the UK you, you're constantly waiting for those nights when the atmosphere is tranquil and sadly they're few and far between so you kind of have to commit a lot of time and but it's pr practice patience and when those nights finally come along the results really are worth it it is immensely rewarding in the deep space category Italian astrophotographer Marco Lorenzi won with a magnificent image of the Vela supernova remnant while Edward Henry from the US was runner-up with an extremely detailed image of the Leo triplet galaxies. The Young Astronomy Photographer of the Year award went to Jathin Premjith for his image of the totally eclipsed moon. 
Tom Chitson's image of the first quarter moon was highly commended in this category, and I spoke to him about his image along with competition judge Chris Lintot. I've got a Celestron Nexstar 4 SE, which is 102mm aperture, so it's quite small. And I used a, just a compact digital camera and just pointed it down the eyepiece to take the photo. When we were judging the Young Astronomers category, we were sitting there and going, well, this could be any other category. So your image would have stood up in any of the others. So you should, I hope you're proud of it, yes. especially in this evening. Um, but I think the other thing it demonstrates is that, that we don't do enough of it on Sky at night, but that thing of, of a photo just taking a camera and putting it on the eyepiece. Um, I think it's really important to show that you can get good images that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you'd considered, when you got started, did you just try it out or did you did you know what you were doing? Yeah, the first day I got a telescope, I just thought I'd just point the camera down the lens, the eyepiece of the telescope, and it just came out with some good images. So yeah, I think that's I just a, continued. When I was, because when I was getting started, um, you know, I still had a film camera, which is, Maybe you won't remember, but they, they were before digital. Um, but you know, it was if you wanted to get into astrophotography, you bought a book, you bought an adapter, and you tried to put it on your telescope. And when I put it on my telescope, the telescope shifted. Yep. So you needed a counterweight. And, and just the idea you can get something good by just pointing and clicking is, is really cool. The People in Space Special Prize was won this year by Geoffrey Sullivan for his image of a lone, silhouetted figure admiring the Milky Way. The Best Newcomer Prize went to Harley Grady from the US for an image of the zodiacal light rising over an old barn. The New Robotic Scope Prize also went to Marco Lorenzi for a fascinating image of the galaxies NGC 474 and NGC 467. I spoke to some of the guests during the evening about what they thought of some of the images in the exhibition. Well, we're joined now on the broadcast by two familiar faces to Sky at Night readers, and that's Paul Abel and Pete Hello. Lawrence from the Sky at Night. Hi. Chaps, great to have you with us. Pete, what was your favourite image in the exhibition this year? That's really difficult to say because there were so many fantastic images throughout the whole competition. I mean, judging, I mean, you've just got a, a complete set of fantastic images to pick from. If I was going to pick one which was my favourite, I really like the one with the moon above the frozen trees. Oh, yeah. There's something about that that sort of... It, it just made me feel cold. It reminded me of being out there and actually looking up at the sky. A very simple photograph, yeah, but so also very effective. Yeah, absolutely tranquil, absolutely beautiful. Damien's picture, of course, is superb. Um, very envious of the detail he always gets. The Orion shot was quite nice. Uh, that, that was a nice shot. The Orion shot is, is beautiful. Uh, it really is, reminds us just how little of the Orion Nebula we actually see. Yeah. And it's just incredible that he's actually managed to pull out all yeah, of yeah, and the colour gas as well. and dust beautiful. glowing in Orion. That's just Gorgeous, beautiful to look at. And Paul, you were telling me that you particularly like Damien's image, of course, the winning image. I, I do. Uh, it's not just because it's a dear friend, but it's actually the. Uh, it wasn't just Jupiter, as we all know, shows an enormous mm. amount of de detail. It's the fact that we've now got the moons of Jupiter, the Galilean satellites, imaged. Um, I mean, I've only ever seen detail on Ganymede with the low orbit refractor, 24 uh, inch telescope. Beautiful. Uh, and even there's some sight, subtle shading. And to see detail on Io and, mm -hmm. and, and Ganymede was just fantastic. To think that uh, when photography and astronomy around the 60s and 70s, nobody knew what these moons were like. That's exactly And right. now you yeah. can go out and image them and see the active geology on Io. It's all accessible. It's quite incredible. It's that it's an stunning. amateur has taken that image. It well, is. It also shows how much um, imaging has moved on. Yep. Because it wasn't that many years ago that the moons were actually just dots in the sky. That's why I stopped with the imaging bit. <laughs> <laughs> now they are a, a valid target. Well, Pete, Paul, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Pleasure. Thank you. There were some stunning landscape shots, which I really liked. The kind of thing that you know you can write a book about, frankly. So it, I think it will get people who maybe don't know a lot about space to really sort of start an interest. And of course, we had the new prize this year, the robotic image uh, of the year. What did you make of that one? Well, we were very curious, I think all of us um, were very curious about what we were going to get for that. Uh, because it's a new field, um, it's very exciting, you know, allowing members of the public access to these real sort of professional grade telescopes remotely over the internet. Um, so we weren't quite sure what we were going to get. Um, and we were really pleased and surprised by the, um, the scope of the images. And I think the, the winning image of the, the shell galaxies was just 
beautiful. It, 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 it's a research grade image, you know, beautiful structure in the galaxies. And as a, as a scientist who worked on galaxies, I was quite taken with that one, I have to say. The one that really hits home for me is that picture of the constellation of Orion, which is mm -hmm. so recognizable. It is something even in these light polluted skies in London, you can look up, you'll see that all the way through the winter. And being able to see all of that, that interesting material inside it, it really does let you look at the sky in an entirely new way. And you have to sort of turn and then you <laughs> suddenly yes. realize, don't you? You see what it is. It made me think, wish I had sort of saucer-like eyes that I could yeah. collect that light and see the whole cosmos like that. It's it so is amazing richly. that you, yeah. you can think looking up there, all of that is up there uh -huh. all the time. If our eyes could collect light in that way, we would see it. Well, that's all from the Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards Night. Don't forget to visit the free exhibition of winning images at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. It's open until the 12th of February 2012. And of course you'll find a special feature on the winning images in the October issue of Skart Night magazine.